to begin by identifying issues within your Power App, moving on to ins inspecting them, and then finally tips for resolving the issues that you found within the app. So let's get started. We have our identify tips, uh, errors, and warning icons. We're gonna have a quick look at these within a Power App. Uh, you've probably seen these if you've done some work within Power Apps, very straightforward. You can see that an error is represented by the red X and we have warnings appearing as the yellow triangle. We'll get into a little bit more detail about the meaning behind those and the impact on your apps as we move through the video. The expression editor, one of the most important things uh, we find in working with uh, working through these errors is getting into the expression editor right away. So uh, if you find an error or a problem within your app and it's highlighted like this one, you can click to edit it in the formula bar and it's gonna jump you right to the error. So that's great to be able to see it, but you need to actually click on it and then it shows you the highlighting. So it isn't perfectly visible to begin with. You don't get the highlighting until you click into the formula bar. So that's an important tip uh, as you're trying to identify the errors that are out there within your app. The stethoscope, another great place for identifying errors within Power Apps. So we can see the little stethoscope right up here in the upper right corner. You can click on it and it's gonna give you a listing of all the errors within your app. So we can see that we have a couple formula errors. You can click on those and expand them and you get more details about what's happening within the app. So that's a great way of identifying errors within your Power App. Moving on, we're gonna have a look at a few more tips uh, around the idea of inspecting errors. So the UI clues, follow the dots. So we saw some of these, I've called them dots in the UI in the designer. Uh, we've got this error one right here. Uh, we can see that right away when we put our cursor over it, we see the name is invalid. So more details will be revealed as soon as you put your cursor over uh, one of these indicators. And uh, that's a great way of getting a little bit of information about the error. And by following the dots, if you click on the dot as well, you get that context menu, then you can jump up into the expression editor and right away we can see that uh, we have another error. You get the opportunity to put your mouse over and see more details there as well. So a couple tips around those uh, error indicators. Errors and warnings, what are the differences? So we talked about them in the identify section of the troubleshooting tips we've got here today. Errors typically are something that's going to break your app. Uh, if you have an error within your app, some functionality might not be working right. You can see we have a typo in this case for one of the properties uh, that we're trying to access within a gallery control. If we fix that up, we can see that uh, we fixed the problem. It's not broken anymore. If we look at a warning, alternatively, this is something that may uh, be affecting your app. It may be uh, stopping your app from achieving full functionality or causing issues perhaps with the data that you're working with. Uh, in this case, we're being warned of a delegation error. So we have a delegation error is coming up. Uh, if you'd like to know more about delegation, there's some great articles from the product uh, documentation about that. So there's a little bit more info about uh, errors, the difference between errors and warnings. The stethoscope. So the stethoscope is another great way. So we talked about how it's good for identifying uh, the errors, but when you're actually investigating them, it's also very helpful. So we see that everything's organized in the app checker or behind this stethoscope icon by formulas, runtime, rules, and accessibility. We can click into any of these categories and get more details specifically about the errors or warnings. Uh, what's great is you can actually click on uh, the details as well. It's gonna bring you into some more specific information about that particular item. You can navigate through all the errors or warnings within your app by doing that. So you can click on them. We can see the expression editor is automatically updated and brings us into that specific uh, error and the details of the a warning, I should say, in this case. So moving along, variables and collections. I'm gonna show you a really quick uh, feature that we find really helpful when we're working with issues within our Power Apps. If you go to the View button within uh, the navigation there, we can go over and have a look at the collections we're working with. So in this case, the camera photos collection is empty, but we get the idea what the schema looks like. And if we wanted to see the data within it, it would actually appear there. And that works for all of your collections. So if you're troubleshooting uh, an error with your data, you can use those collections to, to find out what your data actually looks like. Same goes for variables. So we can see that we've got uh, all the variables we can see we have a user full name variable. We can see what value can, is uh, 
it's holding currently and so on through all the screen level variables as well. If we want to have a look at the data we're working with, this is a great way of doing that. So another way of gaining some more insight when you're inspecting your variables is uh, inspecting your errors in your expressions is to have a look at the variables in the collections. The formula bar results view, this is a great feature that currently is, uh, is, is experimental. But if you go to your app settings, like I'm doing right now, you can go in and have a look at the advanced settings. We scroll down, we can see under experimental features, we have enable formula bar results view right there. So you can activate that and look what happens. Suddenly your formula bar becomes a lot more powerful. So if we go into this collection, uh, this is actually data coming out of SharePoint. Uh, we can click on that and we get to see uh, a preview of all the data. So if we're looking again on trying to figure out what's happening with some of the data within our app, there's another way of quickly being able to do that without having to spend a bunch of time uh, navigating around. It can make your uh, troubleshooting much quicker. So moving along, we have uh, levels of underlining. So there are a few levels of underlining uh, that we can talk about here as well. So we're gonna go back to this error. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll go to our gallery. So we have uh, a, a blue error here. Uh, this is a warning. Typically we have the blue underlining. So we saw that earlier in our example, but if we add another parameter and uh, perhaps give it an invalid value, what happens to our formula? Well, we have another issue so we can see that uh, when we talk about levels of underlining and what that means, we have we have a uh, the whole expression is underlined because there's uh, some errors there. We can see we have a warning for an invalid number number of arguments. But when we look a little bit closer, we can see that uh, there's actually a double underline effect. So the in which we had earlier as a as a warning, if we put our cursor over that, we get to see that error or that warning specifically as well. So watch for double underlining in your expressions. We have a we have a double underlining here as well. We can see we have added in an extra argument or an extra parameter into this uh, sort function call. Get rid of that and we'll clean up our error. So watch for the double underlining. So that covers our tips for inspecting. We're gonna move along now and have a look at some of the tips that we've got for resolving. So the label method, we're gonna talk about that first. If you're, if you're working on inspecting an error and you're trying to figure out uh, what the issue might be, something that we often do and that can be quite helpful is, is uh, just put a label on the canvas. You can see that uh, you know we've got a label here. If we wanted to um, work through perhaps an issue with an expression we're working on, you can pretty easily uh, use a label to begin to uh, work through that. So for example, we know that we have a text field being returned here. And if you want to get uh, the left five characters out of that, we can do that and our label automatically updates. We can be sure that our formula is working right. And then we want to put an upper function around that as well. Uh, we can do that too. And that's all working great. Uh, if we were to add in something else and the expression breaks, you get the idea that you can pretty quickly uh, interact with these expressions and you can have a live kind of way of troubleshooting them. So that's another little tip that we often use if we're breaking down an, it's a, an expression, we're working through a problem with one, we'll put it into a label on the canvas, you can quickly see what's happening with it. The function breakdown. So I'm going to go back to that label. You don't have to do this within a label, but it is useful. If you've got an error, sometimes it's good just to, to, to uh, take your expression. If you can put it into something like a label or begin breaking it down, even in the, in the control uh, that you've originated, that the uh, expression problem originated within, think about breaking it down. So, uh, you know, if we were to start stripping some of the values out of this expression, so let's go back to just the left part. We can grab that. Okay, so we know we're good now. Uh, you know, it's a good way of, of being able to, to, to reduce the number of expressions. If you have nested expressions, uh, break them down. Break them down into the smallest parts that you can and then start building them up again. And it gives you a nice way of, of uh, finding some some issues perhaps or, or resolving problems, identifying where the specific issue in your expression might be. You have uh, the ability to do that by breaking them down. Uh, did it run? This is kind of a general piece 
Uh, you know, we have different events that fire throughout our apps. In this case, if we go to our, for example, our app on start, and on, on our on start event, we have, we're setting this user full name variable. Uh, we can see we're getting the value from the user full name function. If that hasn't ran yet, uh, this value is going to appear as blank. Uh, so, you know, the on, app on start event only runs when the app is started. You can run it from the UI and force it to run like that. But think about it when you're running into issues. And this is kind of comes back to some of the points we were talking about earlier. Make sure that all your variables are set, that the data is set the way you need it to be set uh, while you're troubleshooting. And it might might be that an event has a ran, such as the on start event. Uh, as you're building your app, sometimes you forget to run these things. So make sure that, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't hurt to leave your app, go in fresh, start from the beginning and make sure that everything's initialized the way it will be. And that uh, can also help to make sure that your data is looking uh, the way it needs to for your app to run. Know your functions. So the Power Apps function reference is a great resource. It's uh, available for everyone to look at. And uh, there you'll find full documentation on all the functions. So as you're working with expressions, this is an extremely useful resource. We'll put a link to that in our comments down below. And finally, uh, formatting text or removing the formatting uh, that's been applied. So what we mean by that is when we look at uh, the expression editor, there's a really nice feature here. If you expand uh, the expression editor, you can choose to format the text. This is going to break all the text apart uh, and format it so that you have each expression call being made on a separate line. So it's a really great way uh, to kind of break apart uh, a complex function into its pieces. If you want, you can remove that formatting and put it back to uh, something that's a little more linear without uh, the formatting within it. But uh, that's another really good way of, of uh, you know, being able to step through and look at the pieces of your function. Uh, and sometimes that switch in the view will reveal uh, an issue that you've got perhaps with a parameter or something like that. So with that said, uh, it's a really quick run through of a bunch of tips here. Hopefully you find these valuable in your Power Apps building. Uh, we, you know, we appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Uh, feel free to leave comments for us in the comments section and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.